So immediately, Assault's going into uh, Philadelphia. If they can take New York and that area, that is a huge amount of industry which they would be denying to the CSA. The CSA also scrambling troops around the AI, not having been quite as on the ball as the player for securing territory. So right now it's just a rapid push out to try and secure Pittsburgh and the rest of Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, AUS is being left basically alone to push of their own accord. And then the PSA, completely unguarded border. PSA is just going to be surging outwards. Do we have volunteers? I mean, we have volunteers en route, so we'll need to wait a month or two for them to actually arrive. Do they fix the issue that no focuses can be done in the first months of Austria? I'm guessing that's something to do with the Augs Augsley or something? I don't know. I haven't really played Austria. Do I know a surefire way to keep New England as the USA? No. But it actually looks like they've pulled it off here. And are gaining troops from it. Hartford's being secured. Ah, oh, New York has fallen. That's a huge deal for the USA. Because very often New York can be a real stronghold for the CSA. So I like this. The USA is fighting this a lot, a lot, lot, lot stronger. Just needs to surge out from New York, take Trenton, take Newark, uh, Philadelphia if they can. Has Pittsburgh already fallen? Pittsburgh, I can't even see it. Where is it? No. And it does look like the lines here are starting to solidify. But at what cost? Because there is a very, very small border down here on the OUS front, but not a huge number. We do have more troops moving. Probably want them to force march, otherwise they'll get pinned and killed, as is in fact happening right here. Um, if AUS has any volunteers, they just need to stick units here, or the CSA. And then this whole section will be cut off. Definitely caught snoozing. Like, really good job up here. Kind of forgot about the other units. I mean, I get it. You're, you're busy. You're very busy. Is the US a player? Yes. However, don't forget that there are volunteers coming in from other players for each of the uh, the miners. And last week, the war for America, the USA player nearly lost twice. Very nearly lost to the American Union State and then very, very, very nearly lost to the PSA. Last second cutoff in Michigan managed to win him the war. But it was close. So CSA, are we starting to see some volunteers? We are. So we've got Union of France, we've got uh, Spain, we've got combined city, uh, that's CSA. And we've also got Chile coming in and Italy. However, they need to be careful that they don't get cut off here. So are they going to stand and fight in Philadelphia to try and, I guess, keep a port open? Now nah, it's actually not a bad idea, but they also need to make sure that they're protecting these two provinces. So whether standing here and fighting, I don't know if that's necessarily the best idea for the Third International. Meanwhile, we have the AUS surging forth and just taking territories. These guys are being cut off. Pretty sure he's going to lose them. Uh, but they have started to put some more units down here in the south to protect that. Naval battle going on at the moment between the CSA and the AUS. AUS trying to abandon that and not lose too much. Meanwhile, AUS, are you being supported by anyone? Ukraine is here. Germany is here. Only seeing the Ukraine and Germany right now. Let's go and take a quick look. Uh, Austria. There is apparently Austria as well. Then the USA should be getting supported by the Entente. Although right now, there's only the French Republic and Brazil. Where's India? Where's Australasia? Where's Canada? Canada's going after Panama. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, I get that. Uh, and then I guess India, because it's a... Puppet gets called, well, not necessarily called in. I would expect Indian forces here. Um, and then we have the PSA, which should be co-prosperity sphere. We've got Russia, we've got Japan, we've got Siam. No Fentiento. And nobody is sending lend leases. Is the USA at least getting lend lease? Because they really, really should. Yes, they're being lend leased by Canada and France. France is sending them loads of guns. 2,900. 
and then Canada are sending them lots of everything. 10,000 guns, support equipment, artillery, and fighters. So very, very heavily investing in the USA finishing this war quickly. I like that they've secured New England like they have here. Pennsylvania has more or less fallen. Pittsburgh has already fallen. This is a key industrial ground for the CSA. Losing that is a massive blow for the CSA's fortunes. Meanwhile, the CSA's um, volunteers are stuck here in Philadelphia. It looks like they're going to try and fight on in Philadelphia and maybe try to keep the CSA alive from that and rely on CSA regular forces to keep Chicago and Detroit. But I don't have much hope for them. Uh, this is a huge blow for the volunteer forces. And then we have the AUS uh, mostly attacking into the CSA. So it looks like the AUS is going after the CSA rather than the USA, probably to try and deny the industries of Chicago and possibly Detroit from the USA. And then we're going to have the PSA just marching all out to try and take as much of the Rockies and as many of these northern states as they possibly can because that is a lot of manpower. And remember, every state that one of the civil wars secures is free manpower. It's free troops because they can use the recruit militia decisions as they take these states once so the more that the PSA takes now the more militia forces they can raise the stronger they become and that's a big deal is each member of the Civil War a player or just the USA just the USA but all of the Civil War factions have volunteers being sent by other players. And I am so happy to see volunteers being sent. I hated the fact that last year that didn't happen. But last week we saw volunteers. This week we're seeing volunteers and it makes such a big difference. Like, you say Kaiserreich to me, I think volunteers and Civil Wars and stuff like that. That's what makes Kaiserreich good. I have a cup full of tea leaves. I'm just trying to get rid of them. Looks like my tea strainer didn't work particularly well. And now we go for the old grey. And because I know we had comments about this on YouTube, you cannot avoid the Civil War anymore. One of my favourite changes, actually. Avoiding the Civil War was just such a gimmicky thing and basically ruined the rest of Kaiserreich. So you cannot avoid the Civil War. That is not a rule, that's a mechanic. Oh wow, USA has already taken Detroit. Oh, because of military access through Canada. See, that's smart. Oh, that's very smart. I like that move. Because, again, Detroit, big industry. We have eight um, factories in Detroit. So that's five more military factories and four more civvies that the USA has got access to. And the more stuff that they get, the stronger they become. Philadelphia, meanwhile, has fallen, which means that these guys are all out of supply and they will die. This is going to be a huge blow for the CSA and, more importantly... A huge blow for the volunteer armies. That's four... One Italian. One, three... Four... No. Four Italian divisions, one French, and one Irish. Four Italians, that's going to sting. And then they've also got a couple here caught in Manhattan. This is a disaster for the CSA. This is well played by the US, I like this. Baltic Duchy declared war on Estonia. That might also see um, Russian interventions, which we'll take a look at in a minute if they don't die too quickly. Fentian declared war on Qing. That's an early war. That's a really early war. 1937, so clearly the co-prosperity sphere moving very quickly while well, the Reichspact is hopefully engaged elsewhere. I'm really hoping to see large numbers of troops being sent to Qing. Qing standing army? It apparently has 21 divisions. Where are they? Oh, okay, they're all down here. So they are at war with Shangxi. 
They're moving troops away from Nanjing. Hopefully they can hold this northern territory and hold on to Beijing. They are counterattacking into Fentiang at the moment. We do have volunteers in transfer from Germany, from Ukraine. And Qing is also getting some volunteers back again. Um, hopefully the Reichspact forces can keep Qing alive. Um, and the longer Qing survives, the stronger League of Eight Provinces becomes. Meanwhile, back over here in the big civil war. Actually, let's take a look at the Baltics. Because I want to see if um, Russia is going to get involved down here. So those are just Estonian. Those are just Latvian. We do have Lithuanians. Doesn't look like Russia is getting involved over here. In the game last week, they did. And they managed to basically stop the Baltic duchy from existing. Meanwhile, Fentiang is attacking Beijing. They are currently losing. Nan um, Qing is sending in a lot of troops to defend. They could be trying to get a couple more surrounds going on while um, Qing is scrambling to get troops here. They have lost a unit there to cut off. And it looks like Qing is kind of stupidly focusing mostly on Shangzi, while the far more important northern territory, like this choke point, is massive. Meanwhile, over here, the attacks on the volunteer forces are ongoing. Coming to France times one, Italians times two, Spanish times one, Italian another, Irish, another French. That's a big loss. Meanwhile, the fall of Detroit. Detroit is still in the US hands. This this is this is good. PSA, meanwhile, surging over the Japanese forces. No, Japan did not join Fentiang. This is just Fentiang versus Qing. Interesting. And because they are in a faction with Japan, Japan cannot send them volunteers. However, I suspect that the rest of the faction probably has. They're getting three divisions from Russia. Fentiang's getting loads of divisions back. Receiving two divisions from Japan? Oh, right. Oh, League of Eight Provinces just joined the war. On Qing's side. Fantastic. So it is now Qing and uh, Nanjing versus Fentiang. This is very bad for Fentiang. This is what did not happen last week and could be a big deal because Nanjing has a lot of troops. Now, if the Reichspacks had actually been sending guns to Fentiang, that would be even better. Although it doesn't look like they have access through Qing right now. And Qing is looking very, very weak. We do see a couple of cavalry units burying in. No, AI, what are you doing? Oh, you are abandoning the front, you morons. Oh, I hate the AI in Kaiserreich. However, Shongzi has just been defeated, so all of the units are turning around and now moving to the border. But that might be too late, because this is quite deep in. And once they're into this area, this is all the soft underbelly and is basically unprotected. This is going to matter a lot. Hello. Hey, more than what's up. Um, the Copro is using a hot joint ticket. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. And there we go. I am made sure to click on... I'll click away. I did get kicked out, so that's fine. So Gatto's coming in. Gatto is... I'm guessing... Philippines. Okay, so we have a Filipino player. Ching has taken out Shongzi, so they only have one front now, uh, which should stop them doing silly things. Yes. So the entirety of Ching is going to be focusing on the Fentiang border. And now we need to see if Ching gives military access to the League of Eight Provinces. And then we'll see the massive numbers of troops that uh, six provinces can field moving up there. Also, I really, really, really want to see lend leases being sent th to these two. Because if they can pump out divisions, they can basically stop Fentiang pretty much in their tracks. And that would be an enormous blow. So Nanjing currently getting volunteers from Mark Leek. Um And that's it for now. They do have volunteers and transfer. And Baratia just declared one princely federation. Then we have got volunteers being sent to Qing, which is just Ma Clique. Wait, this is still League of Eight Provinces. Here we go, Qing. Uh, Germany and the Ukraine, not the others yet. Sweden is offering volunteers. And now the, the Qing forces are moving rapidly to try and get this in circle. But as I was saying here, this is dangerous ground because this is all planes. This is very easy uh, for stronger enemy units to push. They really wanted to try and hold here with the river and the mountains and the uh, the hills and stuff. So if they can clear up this um, salient, then that's going to be a good thing for them. There's going to be a lot hanging on clearing that salient up, though. 
Meanwhile, over here in the Americas, we have got the Americans solidifying their hold in Ohio and Indiana, moving up towards Michigan. They've already got Detroit. No, oh, nope, they're moving to try and cut off in Chicago, though, as was reminded to me multiple times last week, there is actually a crossing up here in the Upper Peninsula, meaning that these guys will not be out of supply. Meanwhile, we do have the attacks going on against the... Uh, Third International Volunteer Forces. This is probably one of the saddest volunteer um, missions I've seen. That, that's so unfortunate. They could have done a lot of work up here for the CSA. Uh, but as it looks now, the CSA, way too many troops on the unguarded USA border. And they're just caving towards the pressure from the US over here. Meanwhile, the AUS is taking a lot of territory. They are now fighting against the PSA. They do have troops on the border against the USA. But the USA is consolidated incredibly well. And it looks like they are well on their way to pushing towards Chicago. Uh, the superior American forces, particularly being equipped with Canadian guns, is definitely helping them. Meanwhile, in Qing, the borders here have massively solidified. I think now that Fentiang is going to struggle a lot more to push. Uh, we do have German forces here protecting this. There is a bit of a cutoff going. They are trying to push hard into these planes. I'll push them into the forest, and then if they can push them out of the forests, then they're on the river. They basically need to secure these three provinces, and then I'll be relatively secure about Qing. They need to remember that this is a port, and they need to make sure that that port gets held, possibly even stationing some units on the coast here, or else leaving them as a reserve. Um, but yeah, Qing getting six provinces. This is a very strong Reichspack China right now, and that's going to be a very, very, very big thorn in the side of the Third International. Meanwhile, over here, we have the Americans now on the outskirts of Chicago, currently being attacked back by the CSA, but seemingly holding those lines really quite easily. Um, meanwhile, pushing up through the Upper Peninsula, uh, through Michigan, the tiny little pocket of the United States here being closed. It looks like the PSA is taking the most of those territories. Is the PSA, who are they still being supported by? Russia, Japan, and Siam. Fentiang, of course, fighting a war. Although Canada also fighting a war, so they're not able to intervene themselves. Then we've got the American Union states, supported by Austria, Germany, Sweden, and the Ukraine. The USA being supported by only Brazil right now. And they're getting guns from France, but that's it. Fuzil Bethier model 1932. 2,871 of them. I'm guessing that's artillery? Maybe motorized? And fuel. Lots of fuel for the USA. Probably because the planes that um, Canada sent them have now arrived. And then the CSA being supported by nobody. CSA's volunteers have now been defeated. So the CSA is as good as dead. And is in fact dead. That was perfect timing there, Mordred. USA is going to take all of that land. And now suddenly the US front is looking a heck of a lot stronger. And this is now a three-way civil war. AUS still looking good, but I'm liking what the US has done here. This is a, a good resurgence. Meanwhile, in China, stalemate. Six Japanese volunteer divisions. That's a few. Huzzah! That's definitely a few. Like the moon, thank you very much for the five-month resubscription. Very much appreciate the ongoing support there. Thank you. Uh, Lazy XD, Mashu, Yokbjorn, thank you very much for the follows. Welcome to the channel. And Kaderinoe, thank you also very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. It's a UI bug. It's not six volunteers. I. Oh no, it was Russians too. The problem is I can't hover too long, otherwise you see like their unit compositions. I can show you AI, but player ones I can't. It's not as bad as showing like actual templates from this. But that's one of the things I'm trying very hard not to do is show templates. Especially as we don't have the stream delay anymore. Speaking of stream delay, do we actually have people talking in the... And it actually looks like Fentiang has managed to push out to another province. Baoding, in the meantime, has fallen. And it looks like the 
Qing efforts to secure the territories here have failed. Has Nanjing actually managed to get access yet? No. Nanjing is still chilling. Do they have access through Qing? Like, what's the point of them declaring war if they're not going to be in? They have a ma they have access. They're not just they're just not sending anything. Yeah, they've literally sent nothing to the war against Fentian at all. Clearly, these borders against the German East Asia is way more important, and the uh, legation cities. AI stupidity again. Yeah, AI and I don't know why it's so bad. I do not remember Vanilla Hearts of Iron having this many issues with AI. This is how I remember Hearts of Iron used to be. I think what's happened is Vanilla AI has improved over time because they keep tweaking it and Kaiserreich has not been implementing those changes. Because, wow, the AI issues are coming in thick and fast right now. Meanwhile, in the United States, the USA is still not really bothering to guard the... Uh, the Great Plains territories, Dakotas, uh, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and all that stuff. Um, but they are garrisoning more of the border against the AUS, probably just letting the PSA come on. They are uh, probably the least threat. AUS, if they get the industry and the manpower going, can be a problem. Uh, but taking out the CSA first is definitely the best option, because the CSA has the most manpower and the most industry. And... Getting a hold of those for the USA is a big deal. Now, if the USA is being smart, what they should be doing is getting the militia units from, say, Dakota, from Minnesota, while they control those territories. We're currently paused. CNTFAI is already established, so they are. No, uh, Spain is allowed to avoid the civil war. Sorry, I'm just seeing some messages are being sent. Let me just go and check what they are. Okay, so United Baltic Duchy took out Estonia. That's what happens when no volunteers are sent. Meanwhile, Fentiang continues to push out their units, obviously stronger than Qing at the moment. And I would say that Fentiang is going to be very careful not to start a border against League of Six Provinces, otherwise the League forces will start to pour in. I have a feeling because they themselves are not being directly threatened, they don't really care what happens to Qing, and that's a problem. And it should be absolutely possible to capitulate um, Qing. Although, avoiding the front is going to mean you have to go through the mountains, and that's going to be difficult. It's going to be interesting to see if they do that. Oh, that's a Qing surround. Fentiang playing this very, very well at the moment. Clearly having a lot stronger ability to push against Qing at the moment. Now, is Qing getting any support from anyone? They're still just getting volunteers from Austria, Germany, Sweden, and the Ukraine. Nothing from... who's missing? Bulgaria. Uh, meanwhile, League of uh, Six Provinces getting volunteers from the same people. Again, no Bulgaria. Bulgaria is probably preparing for the Bulgarian Civil War, if it hasn't already started. It has not already started. But yeah, I assume that's why they're not sending anything. And then Fentian is getting reinforcements from Russia, Japan, and Siam. India just declared war on Baratia. Uh, Princey Federation's having their own civil war. And is also fighting the Princey Federation, so Princey Fed is having some big problems. No more avoiding it next Spain update. Good. I hate when you can avoid civil wars. I'm still a bit upset that they removed the um, Russian civil war. Although I think that could do with just a rework rather than how it works before. Previously it wasn't the most interesting, unlike these civil wars, which are great. 
Meanwhile, AUS is taking a lot of the territory off of the United States, pushing north, although that is increasing the size of their border with the Pacific States of America. Meanwhile, they do have a nice cutoff here near Norfolk, and they're pushing down quite hard through the Carolinas and into Georgia. Meanwhile, that is still North Carolina. What's this? Tennessee is holding the line, as is Illinois and Kentucky. Meanwhile, in China, <laughs> the cutoff is still there. That's five units being caught. Ecuador and Peru have made peace. And they keep on embiggening their gains. And we're still not seeing any League of Six Provinces forces helping whatsoever. They're just not interested. 28 divisions could make a massive difference. Like, that's half of the industry. And they've lost only 2,000 men. Like, they're just going to lose because of this. It's a really bad AI decision. Wow. Uh, meanwhile, what was the other war? Uh, we've got it India fighting against Baratia. Baratia is going to be having problems all over the place. Uh, India has some units up here somehow? Through Burma, maybe? No, Burma's at war with them. Loyalist rebels. Okay, so those just rose up when Baratia declared we're on the Dominion. Meanwhile, heavy attacks going on. Looking pretty positive for the Dominion. Dominion forces clearly a fair bit stronger than the Baratia forces defending. Lots of pinging going on. Oh, in America. Nope. Panama. Oh, because Panama has been getting reinforcements. Interesting. So Panama has gotten reinforcements from... Oof. Uh, Russia, Japan, and Philippines. Whereas Canada is supporting Panama on their own. With no reinforcements, this is just Canadian forces coming in. They might well lose the Panama Canal here. That would be a big blow for the Entente. Nice move, really nice move, actually, by the Co-Pro here. And I do kind of wonder if the Reichspact and others want to jump in as well, though I'm guessing it's blocked by ideology. Although it's authoritarian Democrat. I would have thought that the others could jump in as well. And Canada has actually called in everybody. That means no volunteers from the Entente at all. They just can't send them. Which again, I think is a mistake. The Entente's just not done anything on the volunteer front. And I have a feeling that's going to bite them quite hard. Meanwhile, uh, Florida has now been cut off. They have another cut off here on the coast of... Is that South Carolina still? It's split. Okay, that's not fair. One province in both South Carolina and Georgia. Meanwhile, Tennessee and Kentucky are being under withering assault, but we do see a PSA offensive going deep into USA territories, probably going for Chicago and trying to cut off the northern reaches here. Also, if they reduce this front line, then these PSA units, stupid AI PSA units, are going to be uh, removed to the AUS, although the AUS home provinces right now are the ones being attacked, so they're... War score. Oh no, their capitulation chance isn't that high yet. AUS is just losing a lot of men. And having Florida cut off that way is also quite bad. Though they do have access to three ports. They could withdraw forces if they absolutely needed to. Whew. Lots of action. Meanwhile, Fentian is somewhat stalled in their offensive. Still not seeing any league... Uh, troops defending Qing whatsoever, so I don't know why they bothered joining this war, because they're obviously not doing anything. Um, Qing still holding quite strong, though. Inflicting a lot of casualties, although this is China. Like, manpower casualties aren't a problem. Industry casualties. That's where the issue lies. And that's where League of Six Provinces not intervening at all is a big problem. That's another, what, 20 divisions? They could be outnumbering Fentieng 3 to 1. And then if they had their factories coming in as well, that's another 13 factories. That's going to be um, 30 factories. They now have more industry than Fentian. Like, combined, these two should be a match for Fentian, if not mightier than. That's a big freaking problem. And it kind of annoys me that the AI is so bad. As I was basically blindly swearing at the AI yesterday during the Poland game, yeah, my opinions have not changed.